Hi, this is Peter Taiti and Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Art Institute presenting case 16 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating the potential consequences of septal perforation. The patient was an elderly woman that presented with stable angina. She was found to have a severe instant restenotic lesion at the proximal portion of a large first diagonal branch. There was no significant disease in the right coronary artery, and the plan was to perform PCI of that diagonal branch. Both LAD and the diagonal were wired. And the plan was to perform balloon and standing of the diagonal, putting a stand just proximal to the origin of the first diagonal branch. It is important to pay attention at the course of this guide wire. This is a workhorse guide wire. The distally did go into a septal branch. And already from this view, you can see that the wire has gone into the septal branch and there appears to be some sort of extravasation or staining distal to that um, septal branch. Even though it's a workhorse wire, it went into the septal and uh, it seems to be causing some sort of a problem. At the time, this was not recognized and this is not uncommon to focus at the area we're working on the lesion and forget to pay attention more distally, which is the message from this case. Moving on, there was um, more post of that part of the vessel, placed a stand, and um, there's still this extravasation. But eventually, this was not fully appreciated until after the standing of the diagonal branch was completed with a nice result. And then we deposition the wire, but now we do have this communication between the septal branch and a space. And that, of course, created concern. Did we perforate into the pericardium or what is going on? Now, there is rapid clearing of the contrast, which is a good sign. That means that most likely we are communicating with the cavity, the left or right ventricle in this particular case. Nevertheless, this is a perforation, and the question is, what is the next management? It is important to have an algorithm for treating this, and the first step in any kind of perforation is to inflate a balloon to occlude the vessel, to buy some time and see if the perforation will be sealed. If not, if it's a large vessel perforation, usually we do a cover stand, or if it is a distal vessel perforation, like in this particular case, the septal, we typically treat it with embolization with either a fat or a coil. But how do we know if there is actually active extravasation into the pericardium? One way, reported by Stefan Refres several years ago, is to give um, echocardiographic contrast, so definity, and then look under the echocardiogram and see if there are little bubbles or little speckles of the echo contrast going into the pericardial space. In this particular case, the patient remained stable did not have any symptoms, we did an echo and there was no infusion, but to be 100% certain, we actually gave a definite echo contrast and we saw that there was no extravasation of the contrast into the pericardial space. So that helped us confirm that indeed we did not have any bleeding into the pericardium. The patient had an uneventful recovery without any further complication. Several take-home lessons from this case. The first one is the importance of watching the distal wire position carefully and at all times. This is especially important when we have difficulties with delivering equipment because the wire can move back and forth quite a bit and could inadvertently enter into a side branch and cause perforations as it happened in this case. If something happens, obviously it's better to have it in a septal branch versus an epicardial branch because the septal may not cause a problem or may communicate directly with the cavity as happened in this particular case. But nevertheless, the best thing is to prevent this regardless of whether it is in a cavity or uh, in the pericardial uh, space. And finally, if we have a suspected uh, perforation or we have a confirmed perforation, but we are unclear as to whether the perforation is continuing or not. One way to find out is to give echo contrast and determine if uh, there is contrast exiting into the pericardial space using echo guidance. Thank you.